My name is Peach, let me not waste your time. Today I'll be showing you an updated version of how to create a halftone effect inside of DaVinci Resolve. This one runs a lot faster than the last one I taught earlier, so I just thought I would show you guys how I would make it. All right, let's get started. So the footage I am using is from Mark over here from Pixels, and the effect that I'm gonna be showing you is based off of Texture Labs' effect on how to create halftone with a nice pattern. So I wanna show you an efficient way to set this up. I'm just gonna take my clip that we have over here. Let's go inside. The fusion page. Start off, I'm going to add a brightness and contrast. I'm going to hit shift space, type in a brightness contrast, hit shift enter to keep the select tool menu up, and then I can add another node. So I'm going to use the custom tool next, shift enter. Next, we're going to get another brightness and contrast, enter, and then I'm going to add a blur node, shift enter. All right, we can cancel out of this, and I'm going to move this down and then add some more nodes up here. Shift space, I'm going to add a background node, shift enter, a transform node with the XF, shift enter and then lastly a crop node and then get through there i'm just going to line my nodes up just like this and connect this crop to the green input of the custom tool there and now we have all of our nodes set up we can start getting our effect ready so on the first brightness and contrast i'm going to go over and then put the saturation all the way down then on the background node i'm going to preview it in my first viewer so i'm going to hit one and then make sure my viewer is shown up here and then i can go to the type go to gradient and then it changes from linear to a radial. Then I'm gonna go into the image tab we have over here, uncheck auto resolution, and then make this first width to 1080. So we have a square resolution that we have over here. Let's go back to color. Then I'm gonna make sure that this point is in the middle. So this is gonna be start, make that be 0.5. And then I'm going to have this point be at the very top. So I'll hit one there, and then we have our pattern that we're going to use. Next, let's go and preview the transform node. We're gonna go over here to the edges and then put it to wrap and then this all the way down so we can start seeing this pattern start to appear. Then we can also change the angle. So I like to do a 45 or actually let's do a 50. So it's not directly like that. All right, that looks good to me. Next we're gonna go to the crop node and then make sure keep centered is checked on. And then we're gonna put this resolution to 1920 back to our original resolution there. And then we're gonna go to our custom tool down here, go up to the channels. And then we're gonna type in this expression, which I'll also link down in the description below. So it's gonna be IF for if, and then do parentheses and go back into the parentheses and type in C1 plus C2 is less than 1, 0, 1. All right, that gives us our halftone pattern. And then we can just copy this over and then paste this into the green and the blue channel. And we can start seeing our halftone pattern up here over here. And then lastly, on the brightness and contrast, sometimes if we go too low in our transform node, if we just go too low, we can start getting some pixel errors. And so there's some pixels that'll show up red. We don't want that. We just want to put that, uh, desaturate that there. That is only if there, that does appear. But if it doesn't appear, then you should be fine. And then you can adjust the size by holding down control and scrolling this size panel to adjust the size of the halftone pattern pattern that we see here. And if you want a little bit more softness into the effect, you can add the blur and I put it to about 0.5. It was just blurring about just one pixel. So it's still kind of sharp, but a little bit. That is our halftone effect. And then what I like about this halftone is that it actually uses uh, the circles in order to create the colors. So if you don't want this like actually a black spot over here, you can up the gamma over here so we can just get a little bit more white speckles into there. But maybe if you have enough of that, let's do down the gain. And so we just balance that out to keep the contrast in there just like that. So what exactly is happening? So we take a look at our pattern over here. This is just one dot of our pattern, which is a radial gradient going over here. So this is one dot of our halftone pattern. And if we transform that down with the edges to wrap, we can make this pattern go and duplicate itself along itself. And we change the angle and the size in order to create this large pattern that we can use. Then in order for us to use the correct resolution, we need to crop it back to the correct resolution, which is the same resolution that is on our timeline over here. Our brightness and contrast, make sure this is desaturated before we even use it. But if we just don't wanna use that, we can also use this as well, which is the halftone with the color, blending in with the saturation and everything from the background. And then we can also just desaturate just a little bit instead, to get some more natural colors. But yeah, that is our look for our halftone. It's better if we desaturate at the very beginning, and then we can also adjust our levels over here as well. So yeah, let's create a much faster Faster halftone pattern and it plays back a lot smoother than it did on the previous tutorial. And technically, what we did with the custom tool is put this expression here, which allows us to get a hard mix blending mode. So if we want to read out what the expression is, it's basically saying take this first input of this node and then take the second input of this node and add the values together on whatever pixel is there. And so since we have a black and white image over here and another black and white image with our pattern, say we take like the top left pixel, right? You can see that this pixel is white. And so this pixel in this pattern is 
a little bit like mid grayish. And so if we add that together, that'll get a value of one. So we have in the top left corner, we have a one over here. But if we look at the pixel next to it, we see it's a little bit more darker over here, as well as it being darker over here. So those two dark colors, if they add up to a value that's less than one, then we're going to use the value of zero. That's how you get this nice half tone pattern, which either does black or white and no gray values in between, giving us a more authentic half tone pattern because because in real life, half tone is either black or white. There's no gray values in between. I know from Texture Labs, he also adds like a gray node after here. If you want to have a little bit more texture and then have the half tone pattern move a little bit if we make sure that the animation is on. But it, with the gray node, it does lag your playback a little bit more, but it gives us a little bit more of an animated feel to that half tone. But yeah, if you have any questions or suggestions on what I should do in the future, please let me know down below. If you're interested in having tools like this, you might be interested in my all effects pack, which brings all the effects from AE to nodes that you can use inside of Dimension Resolve. Otherwise, if you're interested in other filter effects, you might be interested in my five best free plugins for Dimension Resolve, as there is a couple effects in there that give you some cool effects. Please subscribe and have a good day.